I'm on a little tour on uh, uh, the west coast of Norway, the clear rivers of the west coast. Some of my favorite salmon fishing I'll find here. And um, I'm going to welcome you now to the fourth little film of our series Pattern of the Month. And today I'm going to tie a fly that's uh, it's, uh, designed uh, for conditions like this when you have a bright sun and a really clear river. It's a fly called the grey and green. Um, it's tied to blend into the water. Uh, and I think one of the keys to catch fish on conditions like this is to have a fly that blends in, not spook the fish, almost disappear in the water. I myself had good uh, results and good, good catches on this little fly that I think it's, it's pretty beautiful actually. And uh, I hope you will like the tying and I hope you will catch uh, a few good fish on this fly too. Uh, so today we're going to tie a fly from what I call the classic series. It's a more classic way of tying than doing the turbo style with all the color hackles. This is a fly where the wing divides the hackles. It's tied with a half turbo cone. And why should you have all these different cones then? The cones, first of all, is for balancing the fly so the hook don't hang down and the fish will go only for the tail. The cones will create turbulence. The bigger the cone, the wider the fly will be. The different kind of cones, uh, if you first take the regular cone, it's got a pretty small diameter. The turbos got a bigger one. They're made to create turbulence. The medium profile is we get by the half turbo cone. It's a cone where uh, the, it's actually, it is a half turbo. It's a cone where the upper part of the turbo is taken away, where the current gets the possibility to press down the wing, slim it down and get a medium sized profile on the fly. Okay. So uh, we're going to do a clear water fly uh, for that green water you just saw and uh, uh, I'm going to tie it. We're going to tie the gray and green fly. I didn't say that, but the gray and green pattern, uh, which is a dull green, typical clear water fly. I tie this on different uh, tubing. I, I can tie it on the clear one, of course. Uh, I can tie it on our silver one with the silver flakes uh, and I can also tie it on the new one. This is only a sample. Ho hopefully we'll have it out to you soon. It's a, a, it's a pearl um, tubing. It's really, really nice. But I decided today to tie it on the glow one. The glow one we use for the flies that we fish in the dark because it's phosphorescent. It will, it will glow a bit, but it's also really nice in the clear water on the sunny day to give it a little extra shine to it. So I use the medium there and then I can uh, decide to use either a chartreuse or a clear excess. Uh, I'm going to use the Chateras one today and I start uh, same as before by just cutting an angle on the medium one and uh, then I take uh, the excess and I will just do a little angle on that maybe this is a bit too long and I put them on and make sure it's easy on these uh, tubing to see that you get enough of the extra small to go inside uh, the medium one. Uh, this fly normally, I, I tie this fly with our stealth thread. This is, uh, it's, it's not invisible, but it's almost invisible. It's extremely thin and it's totally clear and it's very, very, very flexible. It's a super good thread to tie flies like this. 
but since you can't see this I thought it would be easier for me or easy for you to see if I go on the white thread today so I start by putting some thread onto the part that I cut so I let the medium hold the extra small no glue keep it flexible keep on saying this the flexible fly and the flexible tube gives a stronger fly okay so I move my thread back and when I create uh, this fly I'm gonna do it the same I do with most flies I'm gonna taper the body but I'm also gonna be a little bit more careful with materials I want this to be uh, very translucent and anything else but overdressed a little bit thinner than I normally do I do the mir mirage part a little bit longer than normal oops it's a slippery material tie it in and on a fly like this if I want it to be a little bulkier let's say we have a little bit of color to the water or we we're on a cold river where we need to present a little bit meatier or bulkier fly I can put the tail on like I did on this one I'm not going to do this here now because most of those flies I tie without the tail so then I take our braid and I will use um, pearl uh, diamond pearl color braid and I'm gonna use our um, uh, Greenlander color braid and uh, one of them is gonna be the body and one is gonna be the uh, ribbing and I will always start by putting in the ribbing first and then I tie in the body part the body material Tie them in, move the thread over, and it's good to have a little bit of the material that I tie in uh, go quite far in front, so I don't just cut it here, because then it gets a little bulky. It's better to try to hide that part under the body. Then I take this, and I tie it in, and I make sure to... Uh, Try to grow it a little bit even though I want this to be a slim body I um, tie that in cut it off and the same on this fly as on all the flies I do most of the flies I I taper by changing materials into a dubbing and here I'm going to use our gaudy green. It's a really nice goldish, uh, darker green uh, color mix that uh, I actually use it a lot myself. Uh, and uh, I dab as before, I just spin on these long uh, tinsel threads or this long fiber dubbing onto the thread. I take a little bit at the time, make sure to cover up the part. Uh, where I uh, tied in the the braid so there's no thread to be seen thread will even it's a strong thread it will break sooner or later just a little small can do that for us and here when I do a body on this fly I'm doing it a little bit slimmer I don't taper it up so heavily uh, and the reason for this is that I want this to be a slimmer fly with uh, even to be even more translucent. So when I've done this, uh, I'm gonna take a body hackle and uh, I will use an olive one. I so I had one feather here. You can do the the uh, uh, olive badger, or you can do uh, uh, any olive one. Actually, just to have a discreet dull color, 
that will go good with the, with the rest of the fly. Okay, not too long fibers now because this is going to be, as I said, a clear water fly. We don't want it to be uh, too bulky. It's going to be a little narrower. The, the half turbo cone will create a slimmer fly and uh, that's the reason why I use a feather with a little shorter hackles. You can also see that what I do, I save like uh, three, four, up to five millimeters here. Uh, I want to build the fly and the wing and everything on top of the medium one instead of the extra small. Uh, oh yeah, don't forget to cut this off, cut it off. And when I do a body hackle, I can take this and I can just go back like this. And what's happening is that I get no fibers here. So what I always do, I always put one turn there before I go back. And I try to pull down the hackle into the dubbing. Do it as even as possible. Take the uh, braid, twin it down to create the ribbing. And you can quit, trim it down really, really hard if you want to have a super narrow ribbing. And I tie this in. Keep on spinning it and tie it in. And I try always to end it underneath. Because I'm going to tie in the, the, the wing on top. So it, it's better to use the, the room I have underneath for, for doing this. Take this tip away. And this way of doing things uh, where I cross the hackle with the ribbing. Everything is depending on the ribbing. This is a super, super strong material. It's almost impossible to break it, which means uh, it will hold my hackle in a really, really good way. But where I tied it in, uh, I cover up the body. It's, it's really strong there. But if I cut this in, there's a little risk this will slip. So what I can do is that I move the thread one or two millimeter front and I take this and I just double it back and go back with the thread. Doing this, I secure and it can slip. Okay, and we take the meanest brush on the market and I brush this out and uh, you will see now that uh, even though I had very few or very little dubbing, I can get quite a few fibers to mix with the hackle and create a very translucent fly, which I think is one of the keys for the clear water flies. Okay, so now we're going to put on some, uh, we're going to start with a wing. So now it's time to put the wing on and I'm going to use uh, two colors of hair and I'm going to use three different colors and uh, different um, uh, flash materials. And I'm going to start with uh, one of the materials that I came up with a few years back. We call it Angular HD. Uh, I wanted to have a material uh, <clears throat> between Flashaboo and Angel hair and uh, we did this. HD angel hair material. I'm gonna do it in the Gordy green colors and I uh, Start by doing it the same way I do with all uh, Flash materials I double one or two turns with thread and I double back and Doubling back is make sure it's wide Doubling back is for securing and uh, <clears throat> Then I don't want them to have the same length of eye taper. I cut and I taper and I don't want this to be longer than where I have my hook because these fibers can then tangle with the hook. If I have, see that's it's a bit tricky to see what I do here with the, all the lights is for you guys, not for me. But anyway, uh, if there's one or two strands too long, I cut them off afterwards. So, 
The basic color on this fly is like a dull olive greenish dirty green color and when I'm doing a fly for uh, clear water I want to have hair that is really really uh, curly because the curly hair lets the light through a lot better. So what I do, I take a hair that's not only curly in the bottom, but also in the top. And uh, I make sure to take a smaller bunch of hair than I normally do. And I untangle it over the brush, which is a really neat way of doing it, I think. Then I move my fingers up to about half and I look at the tape ring. Here you have most of the fibers being equally long and I tie this out and I make sure to create a really nice tapering of this hair. Then I tie it in and here I don't do a regular underwing where I have the first part of the wing to be go to the hook because that's for creating uh, the, the nice drop form. What's more important here is to have the light go through. So I start by putting on a fairly long translucent, but 50-70% of a regular fly and just tie it in. Do the same as I always do on this. Move back, take the thumbnail and press it down on the sides. So I get, I use half of the diameter of the tubing. Then I can secure with one or three, two uh, turns of thread and then cut. The thing with the half turbocon that is tricky is that I don't have very much space here be behind. Those of you who've tried to tie with half turbos and you find out that you have the wing and then a bit of thread and then the cone, uh, that's why you have to do things a little bit different with this kind of cone. And I'm going to show you the tricks. It's, it's just about how, in what order you tie in stuff. Okay, so what I do here, I take a few strands of pearl. It's not going to be many at all, just maybe three or four. Remember, i doubling back, so it's going to be twice as many in the fly. And uh, still I don't have to be so careful with how much thread I put on because I'm gonna cover it up with hackles and, and uh, other things. So uh, here now, normally I put the top layer on the wing on, but what I do now on a fly like this, is that I need to put the hackles on before I put on the last wing. The reason for that is to make it possible to cover all the thread with the cone. So from here, normally on a fly like this, I tie in only one front tackle, but here I'm gonna use a little bit of hand just to make it a bit more fancy and to show you how you work with, with the two hackles. I'm gonna find one that I think is got the good length for this. Make sure to strip off the super soft. What I want here on this is I just want a bit of the uh, uh, the nice uh, what you call it uh, where the bared part of it where it's where it's breaking in black and green. Cut it, support, important when I do this, use the support on the fingers, create a little triangle, and that's the one you tie in. Two turns, take this double, and I double by creating a triangle of three fingers, and I just hold back the fibers I tie in. This way they can't go wrong way. They need to be uh, in the right 
spot and creating that nice little cone shape of hackled strands. And I tie it in. I'm gonna use jungle cocks on this too and I get the question, is it important or not? And those of you who saw last month's film where I talked about a lot of the perspective of the fish and I'm putting this on from the perspective to the perspective of the of the fly tire fishermen so of course it doesn't matter but I like them and I always use them with the certificate and uh, uh, I'm gonna on this fly sometimes I use uh, a, a one that's dyed green today I'm gonna use the natural one and as before I shape the feathers over my finger make them curve and now it's important that these are long enough. Some people tie them in so you cover up the bottom part. I tie this in down here to get the full length of the feather. And I always start with the one closest to me like this. Put it on the side, make sure it goes back at least three quarter of the length of the body and tie it in. And sometimes you have to adjust it. I use my, my thumbnail to move the center of the feather on the tube before I cut it. So I'm, I'm sure that uh, it's right where I should have it. Do the same with the other one. Form it over my finger. And not only curve it this way, I also curve it in like this. And I tie it in, hold the wing, make sure this is uh, the same length, and I tie it in. And make sure it looks, this was a little high, but I can just press it a little bit. It will come down nicely and uh, cut off and here I have to be very careful when I cut all the time and now what I'm going to do now is put on one more hackle before I put on the last wing and this is because if I do it the opposite way I'd, I wouldn't have the room I'm going to use uh, a small shikaboo and I'm going to use uh, just one or two turns and this is uh, helping these are a little woolly I don't want them to be too woolly see what we have here uh, this will help cover up the thread and and make the fly stronger so normally I use a lot of the wool here I want motion in this fly but I I don't want it to be too bulky. When this gets wet, it gets a little bulky. I want it to be translucent. So I take away part of this. It's still very nice and create a lot of motion. Use maybe uh, between one and a half and two centimeters to do two turns. Cut it, create the triangle, and tie it in. Same as before, make sure, double the hackle, use three fingers, hold it in, tie it in. Have one little uh, fiber from the hen feather there. And we'll see if it doesn't cooperate. I just cut it off afterwards and I tie it in underneath. And now I moved my thread down to the extra small. And the reason for that is again to get room to cover everything up. Divide this a little bit here now. 
to cover this up by the thread. Here we go. Looking pretty good. So now it's time to put a little overwing on. And on the gray and green, I use a gray one. And uh, I use uh, very few strands actually. Uh, again, it should be a very curly hair, not straight. I needed to uh, let a lot of light through it. Uh, again, for the translucent fly. Maybe this should be like a normal overwing. I think this is too much. So I take it away. So I have just a little bit, tiny little bit. And again, tapering is important. Hold it in, make sure I look at the wing length. So these fibers are a little bit longer than the longest green. And I tie it in. Now I have to be careful with the thread. And normally when you tie, you can put thread turns beside each other. Here you have to put them on top of each other to be able to cover it up with the comb. And when I cut, I do it really, really close. And you think this will maybe slip. Put a little glue on and it won't slip. I do that afterwards. I'm just gonna put on a little more angular hair. And uh, <clears throat> actually I did this, some new packs here. I did this uh, nasty rusty one. Put the blend together for it to blend together with Peacock. Two or three fibers, put them in, make sure they are fairly wide. Usually I say one or two turns here, I only do one turn and I just double. The tapering here, if they're very long, I can do the tapering now, but I can also cut them off afterwards when the fly is ready. So only one thing left, a little bit of peacock. Uh, I will use one today that is dyed green. And uh, I just love the peacock. It's a fantastic material. It's got such a nice shine to them and it, they pick up the fluorescence uh, in a really, really good way. Well, these ones are a little curved. It doesn't really matter. I will just create, put them between my fingers like this and I will try to tie them in at the same time. Look at the length, make sure they're just as long as the gray and I take two of the other fingers from the other hand and I tie it in. Again now on top and I pull really hard in the thread, maximum what it can take. Like that and then I cut. Again, very, very close. On this I'm gonna use uh, the green metallic, half turbo. And the half turbo is also good in another way. First of all, it balances, but it also steer the fly. If you have a fly that is not balancing right in the water, this one will do it for you. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really nice uh, little design, I would say. Support little bit of glue. Make sure you put enough glue on top so it really sucks in to the wing. And before it dries up, I will uh, take the thread away and pull the cone on. If I've done it right now, this can come down and I press it down hard and it will cover up the thread. Take the fly out of the vise, pull it back, use support again, 
cut it about two three mil and uh, melt it down make sure you have a hole if not I just put it on the needle again take the fly and I look now since I didn't taper I have quite a few strands here of angel hair and I don't want these a uh, longest angel hair because they will even if I put a little epoxy or a little uh, glue on the hook this will for sure tangle with the fibers okay ready gray and green if you look at this fly now I hope you can see how extremely translucent it is the light really shines through this and uh, it's tied in a way that you get the hook up in the center uh, with a nice tapering on the wing but it's not as bulky here in the front as the normal uh, uh, dull weather or rain fly or or a fly that I will use in normal conditions this needs to be tied quite differently yes because of of the clear water and to get maximum translucency to the fly so ready gray and green I think it's a fantastic pattern it's really really good for for um, the really clear water I fish it on uh, not only on sunny days I fish it uh, cloudy and rainy days it just disappears and I think that one of the keys uh, with a good fly on the clear river is to not spook the fish if there's a, a, a fly that is too big or is too uh, tied with two straight materials being uh, not translucent at all I think it can scare the fish uh, these uh, uh, my idea anyway is that the way to tie it like this makes the fish a bit more curious and you have a better chance to create that tick that you really want okay gray and green you can do them big or small here we got the big one with the tail bit more bulky for the heavier water colder water or you can do um, slimmer if you do like this you will see what kind of shape this fly will have it'll, it'll be a quite narrow uh, profile on the fly not as narrow as if you use this even smaller cone but um, it's a nice clear water profile I will say one of my favorite clear water patterns. I hope you like the tying and I'm gonna go back on the river and see if I can catch a fish on this. Thank you very much.